We are live? Not yet. I said you were live. Okay. All right. Changes. We are live. We're all out of focus. So I We've think. been in live for 27 seconds now. Oh, well, I couldn't get on LinkedIn. It was tell me if there was an error. So I guess we're on YouTube um, and Facebook and Instagram. Hi, everyone. Hey, everybody. So you want to introduce everyone? Sure. My name is Michael Broy. This is my lovely wife and partner, Annette. And this is just as lovely, my sister-in-law, twin sister of Annette, Audrey Benedict all the way from Southwest Missouri. Welcome, Audrey. Thanks. Good to have you with us. By the way, if you have any questions, uh, please be sure and leave them in the comment section. We would love to hear, answer any questions. If we see them, we may not be able to see them, but if we do, we will be glad to interact with you and answer any questions you might have. All so, right. So we want to, uh, again, Audrey's our special guest today. So most of the um, most of the uh, uh, broadcast today is going to be about her experience with Ayurvedic uh, medicine and Ayurvedic uh, as long as well as uh, yoga therapy. So we want to talk about that. So yoga, uh, or excuse me, Andre and Annette, how long have you two been twins? That was the hardest question. <laughs> it may be. We get asked that though. <laughs> Only 20 years. It's supposed to be 29 years. Oh, 29, 29 years. years yes. 29 years we've been twins. All right. Yes. So I know that time is limited here. Uh, so, Audrey, let me let me just start asking some questions. <laughs> so uh, tell us about your life in southwest Missouri and what was going on uh, uh, several years ago. You had a, a, a tragic accident involving a motorcycle. Yes. So up until that point, tell me and, and tell us, tell our viewers what was going on. Uh, previously in your life up until that point? Okay. Well, I I'm an RN and I was working for Humana and I had just finished my promotion. I had gotten a promotion. I'd finished my training in Florida and in St. Louis um, within Humana as RN. And I just uh, got through finishing a an award at Ozark, Missouri Police Department, a civilian award for saving a man's life. Wow. And uh, we were headed to Eureka Springs. Who's who's we? My husband and I. And he rides his motorcycle. I ride my own. And he was uh, a little ways in front of me. And I was coming around a corner to the right. It was a blind corner. And I was hit by an elderly man that had been drinking mm -hmm. that, had, that was out of state. Wow. So um, this was on a two-lane highway then. Correct. Yes. So he was in a in the lane uh, coming the opposite direction. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the accident then. I know that he came across the street, across the road, hit you pretty much head on. Yes. Uh, your your left side of your body suffered traumatic injuries. Uh, tell us about those injuries as well as uh, your hospital stay. Okay. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, the gentleman hit me head on and uh, luckily a split second before he, the impact, I saw he was coming at me and I tried to avoid, which resulted in left side injuries instead of a full, full frontal um, impact. Wow. Um, so it was the left side of my body that suffered all the injuries. And so mm -hmm. from the top down, I had uh, fractured my nose uh, damaged my sinuses, uh, degloving of the left side of my face. But now what does that mean? Degloving um, of your face? Well, I had some kind of object. I don't know. I had my helmet and full protective gear on. So I don't know if it was the actual windshield on my motorcycle or if it was the actual uh, side view mirror of the car mm. that I took out with my face um, that something went up under in between the skin on your face and the muscle tissue and separated it all the way up to under my eye. Okay. Which by the way, she uh, mentioned that she had her protective gear on. I, I fully believe that the protective gear that she had her boots 
and her motorcycle jacket that had the what the metal the what armor is that in it. yeah yes. the armor in the uh gear i believe it fully saved her uh left lower leg and it fully saved her left lower her left arm even though she sustained uh quite catastrophic injuries in those areas uh she still has them so we're going to talk about that in a little bit uh in more in depth here but i just wanted to bring that up because i think that's important to yes. uh, understand that you did have your protective gear on yes, and as a result we i do believe it did save two mm. limbs yes wow. i do too and her I life too. as well yes 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 so so those were just the injuries to your to your face and your head that you've yes. already explained. So what else, Annette mentioned a little bit about it. What else, what exactly happened to the rest of the left side of your body? Um, well, I sustained a laceration to the lung, uh, some broken ribs, a laceration to the spleen. And then, um, then on my arm was completely dislocated right at the elbow. Uh, and I mean like shattered, it shattered the whole elbow joint. It shattered uh, my wrist and my hand. And then going on down my leg, I had a sustained a crush injury to my leg, which resulted in damage to the muscle tissue, dislocated and fractured my knee and uh, cr basically crushed my left foot. Wow. So so you were um, how far ro from the road were you when you actually after you hit and you s sustained all these these injuries, where did you end up? I ended up in the ditch on the right-hand side of the road, which was in my lane. So I actually uh, received the impact, went down the side of the, the vehicle, rode on up the road quite a ways further. I don't recall that, and I just recall whenever I landed in the ditch. Wow, okay. Uh, so is there anything that you want to talk about between there um, and uh, getting to the hospital? Um, that that might be paint paint the picture a little bit better of what's going on, and then um, how long were you actually in the hospital once you got there? I was transported to a local hospital in Branson, Missouri, to uh, be stabilized uh, for transport. The area was too the terrain was too rough for a helicopter landing, mm. so I was transported to the nearest hospital, um, and they were not equipped to handle the trauma. Uh, that I had. And so I was transported from there after I was stabilized to a hospital at level one trauma unit in Springfield, Missouri. Wow. Okay. And then how long were you there? I was in neurointensive care for five to seven days. And then I was on the floor, the um, orthopedic floor for five to seven days. And then I was in rehab for two weeks. Wow. Okay. So, so you're, basically three weeks, close to three weeks of being in the hospital. Yes. How many surgeries did you have? I had, <laughs> I, you Do know, you even remember? I, um, I had multiple sur surgeries while I was in the hospital and then I had multiple surgeries after I was out of the hospital. And this one I'm showing so, by the way is her left arm right here. There was no elbow joint left, right? Correct. And they had to rebuild the elbow joint. Okay. All right. Yes. So there's, uh, Annette's got several uh, x rays yes, here that she's going to show. The left hand. The ulnar, was it ulnar fractures? What kind of, what kind of fractures did you sustain in the left arm? And you know, they other than the shattering, the, it shattered. The joint was completely destroyed. I'm very lucky that I have uh, any kind of range of motion. Here's more of the uh, actual uh, reconstructing of the elbow. Right there. So the ball of the joint was displaced, the radius. Um, was completely shattered. It looked like a, a stick that had been broken off a tree limb that had frayed at the ends. Wow. Yes. And, and um, I, I got to show this one. Audrey's going to love this one, but uh, <laughs> gross everybody. Yeah. Now we're yeah. going to lose our entire audience. Yeah. <laughs> or gain some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but the, the most one, if, if I could, I, I would love to show the video of the removal of this, but this was her <laughs> left foot prior to casting. The balls on top of the toes are pins that go all the way down, uh, travel all the way down to the, t I'm going 
this way there, channel down. It goes up the phalanges here all the way up to the ankle bone, right? They were, how long were they? Six inches? They were entire length of my foot. Yes. I have kind of a long foot for five foot. So they look like a little push pin, but they are actually deceiving. They're uh, very, yeah. yes, as you can tell, me and Audrey are very short. People, our height went that. to our feet is in proportion. Yeah. Yeah. I've, have... I've never seen a five foot tall person with a the... size 17 shoe. What is the, or foot. what is the, uh, the elves with the big feet in that, um, that show with the, they're short people with big feet. No idea. They drink the beer all the time. That's us. That's our <laughs> descendants. Do, that. do drink beer all the time. <laughs> all right. So, so uh, those of you watching, or most of you watching anyway, understand that um, uh, Annette is an Ayurvedic practitioner. As well so, as an RN, so like as my well, sister. As well as an RN, uh, case man, certified case manager, a whole lot of things. Yoga therapist, uh, international yoga therapist. Um, so there we, we <laughs> preach and we talk a lot about um, Ayurvedic um, remedies and Ayurvedic help, but there certainly is a time in our lives when allopathic medicine or Western medicine uh, is a blessing. When, Annette, let me turn to you, when would be the best time to, if we had our choice between the two, when would the allopathic medication or allopathic uh, treatment be the best? Allopathic or uh, holistic? Allopathic. Okay, so so um, in in my opinion, uh, holistic medicine, if used in the beginning for most issues like chronic illness, if we use that into our and um, incorporate that into lifestyle choices, that would prevent the chronic illnesses in the first place in most cases. However, I want to stress the importance of. I am never against allopathic medicine. I am all for allopathic medicine. In this particular case, here's a very good example of the benefits of allopathic medicine. For instance, my sister was laying on the side of the road after being hit on and by an elderly driver, and there she was on the side of the road. So the last thing you want to do is call an Ayurvedic practitioner to come to the roadside to help out your critically, catastrophically injured sister or client. So in that case, we want to get her out of the crisis. She is now in a crisis. And so that's where allopathic medicine comes into play and plays a beautiful part in this entire role. Um, so so that is, does that answer your yes, question? Yes. Any type of car accident, uh, any type of uh, issue where a client is in critical uh, crisis, uh, like suicidal, for instance, that's a crisis. So we want to get them right to allopathic medicine to get them out of the crisis. The key component here is once they're out of uh, the crisis, then that's when Ayurveda can step in and, uh, and complete that whole picture. But Ayurveda can also play a role in uh, these this crisis as well. So for instance, when my sister was in the hospital, I went to see her and I used Ayurveda along with allowing the allopathic medicine world to do their magic with her, get her out of the crisis. But I also brought in Ayurveda as well. I brought in bone broths, which she uh, was so sick and nauseous. Uh, she, by the way, was uh, in, in during uh, a time period in the uh, allopathic medicine world where unfortunately she, her treatment was delayed. And, there, and it's, it's political at that time, um, why that happened, uh, but we won't go into that but her, her treatment was delayed. So she was in neurotrauma ICU for a lot longer than she should have been simply because she was waiting to go into surgeries. And again, there's a whole dynamic behind that one, but that's not for this show. Yes. Yeah. And during that time, of course, my husband had called my sister first thing. I believe he called you at the roadside, mm -hmm. maybe. Yes. Um, and so she immediately took a plane and came up to Missouri to help me. And so, um, you know, I'm a nurse. I'm an RN. I've worked intensive care. I've worked in the hospital. I've worked in nursing homes, uh, very familiar with the medical system. Um, however, it had been about eight years since I had been in intensive care and things have changed a lot. Um, during that stay in intensive care, and I'm not meaning to dog the nurses because it is a medical system flaw that we have going right now. Yeah. Uh, my dressing was not changed at all on my arm. I had a compound fracture um, that had been exposed to asphalt, dirt, 
gravel. Um, um, vehicle. Yes. Impact. And uh, so very high risk of infection and my dressing was not changed. I, however, was under uh, a, on a morphine pump. So I was not able to really recognize. Comprehend it. Yes, yeah. that, that that was going on. However, people would approach me as I was laying in the hospital bed and comment to me the smell. Oh, the smell. You smell like a dead animal. And I wasn't comprehending that was my dressing change. The, the nursing staff would come in and change the pillow that my arm was resting on because it had drained all over the pillow, but they weren't changing the dressing, which resulted in a horrible decaying smell. Um, so that is very humiliating as a patient because now, because now I know that that was the situation, whereas at the time I didn't, I just knew people were commenting to me that the smell was horrible. Um, I was never once turned in intensive care and I was never bathed in intensive care. My sister bathed me, she washed my hair, she repositioned me. Um, it, it's, it's a really sad flaw that we have in, in our nursing because unfortunately the nursing is all turned to documentation and they're not allowed to care for their patients. So no, no fault of the nurses, no, by no, no mean, it's no, a system. It's a nurse, system yes. and that's it. It's a system, but in all mm -hmm. fairness, if I can, uh, they had some wonderful staff yes, in the yes, hospital. Yes, they did. And so in all fairness to the staff, I they knew that I was a nurse as well. And yes. so they kind of left us to our own devices, I yes, think, yes. Uh, because of that. So I had to go out and get the wash pants. And they're and overworked. That. They're very overworked. Absolutely. They're, all, absolutely. they're understaffed. Uh, their patient to nurse ratio is totally unfair. Yes. So, no, I am not dogging the hospital or the nursing staff at all. I... I it's understand. not the staff's yes. problem, it's a system problem. Mm -hmm. And so, because very good people. Mm -hmm. So so you went several weeks through the system. You went also back and forth for other surgeries and that kind of thing. Yes. At, at what point or what time in all this did you reach out to Annette and begin to seek Ayurvedic health? <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> so, if I can, so if I can back up, during the hospital stay, so what Ayurveda can do in the hospital stay is try to make the client as comfortable as possible but trying to balance doshas understanding the dosha can make up of the client while they're in the hospital and then helping to keep them as balanced as possible because right now they're in a state of crisis and they are so doshically imbalanced and so the goal of the allopathic medicine at that time was to get her stabilized to be able to go into surgery so that was a trying to make sure she was stable enough to go into surgery so where i could where Ayurveda could come into play here and yoga, by the way, is using breath and nutrition to try to get her as uh, optimally ready to go into surgeries as possible. So if you know anything about hospital foods, nutrition is not their priority. Well, I was NPO too. That too, because of the too. surgeries. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. That was afterwards mm -hmm. that I, the bone broths then become, um, came into play. So you were NPO for quite some time. So, because she was waiting so long to get into her surgeries. So at that point, mm -hmm. what do you do? You start, you, you oil the feet, you keep her as come, you keep her warm um, because the hospital is going to increase what we call an Ayurveda. Uh, they're they're going to shoot Vata out of the roof uh, when it comes to a hospital stay. The coldness of the hospital, the sounds in the hospital, it's a strange environment. Uh, she's scared. Anyone in their right mind would be scared, even though she's a nurse and she knew the process that she was going to be going through. It's Being still scary. scary. <laughs> yes, I knew what was And that would, yeah, knowing kind of too much gets you mm -hmm. be even more scary. Uh, so trying to calm the, the client or your patient down using Ayurvedic and comfort measures as much as possible to try to make this transition into what she's needing to endure as easiest as possible. So that's where Ayurveda can help during the crisis period is, is assisting and supporting the allopathic medicine and letting them do the job, but trying to keep the client as balanced as possible in a very imbalancing environment. Hmm. All right. Thank you. So, you so then when, at what point did you contact Annette to come down and seek out her help? with some Ayurvedic. Well, uh, actually it wasn't me that contacted Annette. It was my husband, Hank. Okay. Um, I, I don't really know if, you know, I still wasn't quite in my right mind. Um, I was having memory issues, headaches. Uh, I don't know if it's from the anesthetic or the, 
a brain injury that I sustained the, the impact. Um, I had a closed head injury, so I wasn't actually diagnosed as a head injury, but it was a closed head injury. So I, we don't know where the memory issues, I had short-term memory issues. So I wasn't really connecting. Things weren't connecting. Um, then I got a nosocomial infection, uh, which is the result of antibiotic use, which they have to do during the surgeries. And I had multiple surgeries and long surgeries, I believe uh, two were 12 hours long. Wow. And um, so therefore I was on antibiotics for a long time, IV antibiotics. <clears throat> and so once I finally got home, I developed an osocomial infection from the antibiotic use, which is uh, C. diff. And if anybody uh, has suffered from C. diff, knows it's uh, not very pleasant at all. And so in the result, I just laid on the couch. I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink. Um, I basically didn't move that much. Uh, however, my husband uh, decided that I was gonna die. So either he-, he decided. <laughs> I probably he just felt gonna, like I was, was gonna, gonna die. kill you or- <laughs> <laughs> that the so, decision had been made. Yes. So either I was going to the hospital or I was going to Annette's. And so he called my sister and explained to her what was happening. And then he, uh, I don't, I think dad paid for the plane ticket for me to come down to Annette's because if I was going to die, I guess he wanted me to die. <laughs> I didn't have to deal with it, not him. Thanks, mate. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Hank. You know, sister in laws can be bad enough, but when they, <laughs> when they come to die, <laughs> or the smell not... so bad that has to be So, anyway, um, that's what that's how that happened. So, once I got down here, um, there was a whole so how much did you talk about your weight? Uh, no, I was I had lost about 18 pounds, and that's a lot when you start. Mm -hmm. when they're as small as these ladies are and you lose 18 pounds, that's a, a pretty good percentage of your body weight. Yes. Yes. So, so when you finally got here and we lovingly welcomed you into our home, mm -hmm. smell and all, <laughs> <laughs> and then that began to treat you. Um, tell us about the process, about the, the uh, combination Ayurvedic slash yoga slash um, everything involved with it. Um, how were, how did you begin to feel? How long did it take you to begin to feel better? Um, kind of know that mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, you were kind of making some progress. Yes. Well, uh, the doctor for C. diff, as you, uh, if anybody's ever experienced C. diff or you're in the medical field, you know what C. diff is. Uh, and I, a uh, colostrum deficit mm -hmm. is the name. I don't even know if I pronounce it right. Cause we've always called it C. diff. Um, the the um norma flora yes in your gut is disturbed so anyway the um prescription for that in the western medicine world is more antibiotics mm -hmm. so they had given me more antibiotics and i had taken one i think one and i thought this just cannot be right so when i got to florida and it started treating me she started treating me with I'll let her tell you what she treated me with, but it was like the next day, the next day that I started seeing results. I wasn't uh, vomiting or, you know, the diarrhea, yeah. diarrhea and uh, the stomach issues and the cramping and the everything. So she, she had a whole treatment for that. However, she discovered a lot of other issues that I wasn't aware that I was having um, through that. So it was very, 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 very difficult to go through. Can you, can you talk about any of those other issues um, in this particular setting? Yes. Well, can we um, back up just a second is that you had been through rehab at this point. So she had already been through, she was taking uh, occupational and physical therapy, right? Yes. So she was going through, she was in the heart of, or had you gone, you were on the back end of that, right? No, I did physical therapy for about a year. That's right. So you were, okay. So you were mm -hmm. in still in the middle of that. So physical mm -hmm. therapy and occupational therapy, she was currently uh, involved in. And then she was on now more antibiotics for your C. diff. Yes. Which and I was too sick to, to do any therapy at that point. Okay. Yes. 
So where did we stop at? I don't know. You interrupted You know me. what? I think I was getting, uh, I know, I was getting home health therapy at that time. Okay. Okay. All right. So Annette began to treat you immediately. Within 24 hours, you began to feel different. Yes. Okay. So even from that, that first day or the next day of waking up, beginning to feel better, um, I don't remember how long you were here. Was it a week or 10 days? Yeah, something like that. Two weeks, maybe, maybe okay. two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so were there any stages or like leaps uh, of where you could really tell things were improving with you? Well, the main thing was the C. diff uh, okay. subsided and I could actually eat something. Um, the next thing was um, after I was able to start and start working with me was a realization of how severe my injuries were. Yes. And so I so that came realize. in a second stage, really. So yes. this stage, you were physically sick. And so we needed to heal and nourish her body to get her over that physical sickness. Mm -hmm. Then you went back home, right? And then you came back and I worked with you more yes. in Ayurveda and yoga therapies. And I think that's when the true healing began. But we had to get you out of yet another crisis mm -hmm. that, that was caused as a result of her extended mm -hmm. hospitalization. Um, so we had to what I had to do is uh, work on uh, getting her out of this crisis. So I want to give a little disclaimer here, though, while we're talking about this, I'd never recommend anyone to go against your doctor's advice. So uh, always follow your doctor rec recommendations. However, if you're going to incorporate holistic or Ayurvedic medicines into your lifestyle and you're still under the doctor's care, please always, always check with your doctor before incorporating these things. So a little disclaimer there okay. to add to this. Uh, me and my sister are both registered nurses, so we felt very comfortable well, in what we were doing. And so we progressed into... Um, taking her off of the antibiotic. We knew the consequences that can happen as a result. And again, I want to give a disclaimer, never stop your antibiotics without uh, talking to your physician, never. That can cause a f uh, even worse symptoms yes. of what you were already experiencing. So please keep okay. that in mind. So we chose to do that. And then we went uh, and did some very basic things. My sister had been in a very artificial environment. In an Ayurveda, we understand the uh, and truly understand the uh, benefits of nature and a natural environment. So one of the very first things I did was get her out in the sunshine. This was during the winter time, by the way. Mm -hmm. I have the advantage of living in Florida when it comes to winter time. So she came a bit, not only out of her environment that was very cold and harsh, but then winter hit. And so she was in a cold uh, winter-like environment. So she was able to come down and spend some time in the sunshine and near the ocean and on walking the ocean. And so getting her back out in nature in the sunshine was critical at this point. Mm -hmm. I think a very healing, not only in the um, diets that we uh, changed around, I put her on a monochromatic diet of kitchery and then use herbal remedies, uh, particularly trophala, which is a, a very wonderful product for helping balance the gut but there was many uh remedies that we put together teas the herbal teas that we used and then getting her out in nature and into the sunshine and uh within like she said one day could see a dramatic difference wow. in already in a but we you know even with the discontinuing of the antibiotics that helps us eat all right so so there's there are people watching, people viewing, and people that will view this later who either have C. diff or have gut issues and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned kitchery and you mentioned a couple of things. So can you go into a little more detail on what somebody watching might be able to do to begin to, to get some clarity in their gut and begin to feel better within possibly 24, 48 hours also. Um, so yes, so it depends on the symptoms um, and the issues, but bottom line is uh, when we're having gut issues, there's a upset in the balance of the normal flora in the gut. So the normal bacteria that, that creates a healthy environment for our gut. By the way, the gut is also considered the second brain. So there's emotional components that come along mm -hmm. when your gut is out of balance too. So not only was Audrey uh, having severe uh, intestinal issues, uh, there was multiple things going on as well 
because of her accident, we didn't, allopathic medicine fails to overlook the PTSD that comes along with it, the emotional trauma that comes along with a traumatic uh, physical injury. There is also an emotional energetic component that always goes along with injuries like that, that that's where, again, allopathic medicine um, can fail the clients in that realm. And that's where Ayurveda can come in and complete the beautiful picture and helping that uh, patient heal. So um, my point was, is that she was uh, dealing with some, also with some depression and didn't even realize it. She was feeling so badly, but that comes along with having gut issues and a, tra and a traumatic injury. So a very uh, much a double whammy. So we want to keep the uh, gut in balance. So if you've got gut issues and there is an, um, uh, you're having emotional like depression, anxiety along with that, keep in mind that the gut is the set considered the second brain. So he, they got emotional issues and gut issues can go hand in hand at times. So healing the gut issue might in fact correct the emotional issues that you might be <laughs> that you might be experiencing <laughs> and and so uh so we want to target um the healthy gut uh bacteria so that's one of the first things we want to do is target the healthy gut bacteria because in ayurveda we believe that the the body can heal itself if we just assist it and so that's all we're doing with these herbs is we're assisting the good components of the body so that the body can then come into play and start its own healing process, its natural healing process, which, by the way, that's why you see like uh, medicines are quicker acting, but yet you have um, side effects from medicines. Herbs, generally, you generally you don't have side effects from herbs, but because they are a natural component, you will get results from them. But it takes a little longer for you to get results from because they're assisting the body's own abilities to heal itself. So with that being said, in Ayurveda, if you are suffering from gut issues. Uh, what color does Audrey have on her hair? <laughs> That no, goes right along with gut issues, Timmy. <laughs> no color, just gray. It's, a, it's cold old lady gray. <laughs> so, so with that being said, we can we can definitely answer that question. Then. <laughs> yes. So I forgot what I was saying. I was saying heal the gut. Um, well, you went off to a more important rabbit trail. I know color, hair, hair color. Um, so we would target the gut with bone broths, um, trifala. Uh, we would do a monochromatic diet, which is eliminate anything that might, um, um, but K Timmy's asking another question that got me sidetracked. So eliminate anything that might cause an upset in the balance. So el in eliminating any sugars, uh, flowers, uh, and going monochromatic with uh, kitchery, which would be uh, beans and rice and bone broth and organic, fresh, local veggies. So going that route and then doing herbal teas, anything to nourish the gut. Now, in even more of a crisis, we might look at uh, things like colostrum, um, that sort of thing, but it all depends on each client. Everyone is different. But if you want to do a basic healing of the gut, if you're having gut issues, uh, incorporate bone broth, trifala, uh, warm water and lemon, and some uh, slice of fresh ginger, uh, drink mm. that. Oh. That's very good for the, um, the gut. And uh, Timmy said, she's sorry. Timmy, we love you. Ask away. We'd be glad to answer any questions you have. So um, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what we're looking at um, as far as gut. Does that help? Yeah, it does. So, so Audrey, um, I remember the second trip. Now you're still experiencing quite a bit of limitations. So let's, yes. let's move from, um, from maybe the, the, the issues with the C. diff and, and the gut and the emotional stuff, which all is all very important. Physically, you had lost quite a bit of, of your natural movement and motion. Yes. Uh, about what would you say was limited percentage wise? Um, you know, I don't really know about a percentage wise. I know that in rehab, they treated me like a stroke victim. So I had a Hemi Walker like a stroke a victim okay. would have. Um, the rehab that I received was very, very, very painful. It was uh, the forcefully bending of my fingers mm -hmm. and uh, stretching of my arm and um, the and, leg and just up, I may interject. She had a screw loose. 
I did. <laughs> really? We have proof that my sister has a screw loose. <laughs> it's and not loose though anymore, <laughs> but it was. So um, can we, can we, um, so she really had a screw come out in her hardware. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> we were going to go right past that. So um, the, the therapy was extremely, extremely painful. Um, I wasn't progressing like I thought I should, of course, but when you're used to being uh, running and, and being active and riding and um, riding motorcycles and riding horses, uh, the limitations were, I wasn't progressing as fast as I wanted to. I was getting very uh, irritated with the progression. But I didn't know my limitations until I came here and Annette uh, worked with me doing yoga therapy. And that was one thing that they did not do in therapy was stand and address all your physical limitations and where you were neglecting yourself. So as a stroke victim, I don't know it, how many have got any medical training. There's a thing called left-sided neglect, which often happens with stroke victims. So the part of the body that isn't working properly, they neglect it. They don't realize it. Their brain subconsciously ignores that. And tricks you into thinking it's... Yes, and, and you think mm -hmm. it's okay. And I was doing that, and I had no idea I was doing that until Annette got me in a mirror and started doing therapy with me. And then um, that was the most extreme hardest thing I've ever went through in my life was facing the reality of my actual deficits. Yeah. I remember um, when you came down mm -hmm. and uh, we started working together because um, I knew she'd been going through physical therapy and occupational therapy. And so remember we're past her gut issues. She's now her physical, she's physically strong now. She's on the way well, to my my arm was still about this big around. But. True, <laughs> but but we got you over the, the yeah. C. diff crisis yes, and yes. you were now getting nourishment. Yes, I had and, atrophied something terrible Yes, as far as left-sided atrophy and really good. Yes, and so I remember um, getting in, her into the my yoga studio and into the in front of the mirrors. And one of the things that we want to address in Ayurveda and yoga therapy is that that remembering that the person is a tripartite being. So when a person is endured a, a traumatic injury, it runs much deeper than the physical injuries themselves. So we're dealing with um, we're dealing with a complete lifestyle change. And um, so one of the things that um, allopathic medicine does is it generally gets a client to a certain point and then they stop. And then that if you don't get the client yes. over a hump, then they will forever remain in this catastrophic mentality. And then they don't heal energetically and emotionally as well. So in essence, this traumatic injury not only uh, harms you physically and your lifestyle from that point on, but it stunts you emotionally and um emotionally as well. And so that's why you see people with a lot of traumatic injuries, they will, they, they start getting addicted to medications, not all, by the way, just some uh, with medications, or they start drinking, their life has changed, and they don't know how to deal with it. They hurt, they're in pain all the time. And so they start coping with other mechanisms. See, that was the first time uh, I as a nurse had worked uh, in rehabs before. Um, matter of fact, I was a director of nursing over a rehab at one time. And um, I saw people after they was injured or thing and they sit down and they don't get any better. They, they sit down. So I knew that that was going to be a result because once you sit down, it's over with. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but I never understood it until I went through it. It's it hurts. It hurts more than anything. And so I did want to sit down. Yes. And I had to fight everything in me to to make myself move and get up and keep going forward and keep pushing myself because it hurt. Yes. Yes. So so one mm -hmm. of the things, yes, and that's one of the things I want to stress when you're going through physical therapy and occupational therapy, whether you've had a traumatic injury or injury, any injury, uh, to that effect, it, it is very painful. And so when she yoga therapy is should never is usually never painful. Mm -hmm. 
But what my goal was as a yoga therapist and Ayurvedic practitioner was to get her in front of the mirror because after you've sustained a traumatic, a catastrophic, and we're calling it traumatic, but this was a catastrophic injury. That means it's life changing injury. So her whole life has shifted and changed now. And so what my goal was is to get her to look at herself in the mirror, because until we face our deficits, we can never move forward. And that's where I think allopathic medicine fails us is that it, it a lot. Sometimes we never force that client to face their deficits. We enable them to cover it up. If, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we we pretend it's not there to a degree. And I know that sounds a little well, they bit don't address the body as a whole. A lot of times yes. they address on just the elbow. Let's straighten your elbow out. Let's work on that. Let's put it on a machine to stretch it till you pass out, which actually happened. But yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> they, they don't address like how is this affecting the right side of my body? Yes. How is this affecting um, my balance? You know, um, so one of the things that I hear all the time from working with people with catastrophic injuries or traumatic injuries, especially like a car accident, you had it at any type of impact, even a fall. Uh, people will tell me that they feel out of kilter. And you said that quite a lot. I feel mm -hmm. like my frame is bent. And so what happens when you've had an impact is that it twists the body and your muscles, then one side becomes lax and another side. So one side is too flexible and another side contracts. And so we, it, the body then wow. stays in that bent frame position. And so yoga therapy's goal is to start opening and releasing in the contracted areas and tightening up the, um, to the areas that have relaxed as a result of compensation. And uh, so we look at the body, the person as a tripartite being. So knowing that this tra trauma has changed your life, has affected you on a spiritual level and an energetic level as well. So emotional, physical, and spiritual level. And so going and addressing these areas, but the, one of the first things you have to do with anyone that sustained an accident is get them to accept the deficits and where they're at in that moment. And that was something that my sister had not come to terms with or even realized that she had not come to terms with. Mm -hmm. And so my goal was to put her in front of the mirror and start doing rate passive range of motion with her. And then that's when, like, I remember walking, I worked with her a little bit and was watching the look on her face. And uh, I was, it's like, she's not, she's not realizing how bad she is. And, um, so I went, I walked out of the room and then I came back in the room and she had continued to do some of these uh, range of motions uh, that I had been working with her on. And when I came back in the room, she was like in tears. <laughs> I've never seen my sister cry. Or, I mean, we don't cry very much. So uh, I was like, so she's like, I had no idea that I could not do this. And so I knew that when when a client gets to that position, we want to hang there as long as we need to, because she is at a bridge. She's at a bridge that she can cross over and now improve, or she's at a bridge that she can curl up and decide not to live her life and let this injury get the best of her. So it all depends or on get angry. I got a little angry and that's perfectly natural. <laughs> that's natural yes. too. And yes, allowing I got angry. <laughs> But you know what? But that's a perfectly natural and a healthy response too. So it you if whether so some people will cry and other people will get angry. Uh, her and I both in when we get upset, we don't usually cry. If we cry, it's tears of anger. <laughs> but we react angry, ang angrily to uh, situations instead of uh, crying. <laughs> <laughs> runs so, in the family. I know. It does. Yes. And, and so uh, one of the things that I, my goal with my sister and anyone that I work with in yoga therapy and Ayurveda purposes is to um, address them as a tripartite being, bring their doshas back into balance and addressing the physical, emotional symptoms um, and helping the client change their identification to this injury. So my main goal was to shift her perspective of her injury because so many people will become a victim of their injury. Yes. And my thinking is that we can overcome anything. We just need to 
change and shift our perspective. If we're ever going to live a quality of life, we can never live as a victim. Correct. And so I'm all about victory. And so changing our perspective. Now, that doesn't mean pretending by no means. So when I say that, a lot of people think, oh, that's just pretending that it's not there. No, no. I'm saying let's take a, a real hard look in the mirror and let's come to terms with this. And until we come to terms with our own deficits and whether we've had a traumatic injury or not, we all have deficits. Uh, until we come to terms with facing those head on, we can never change our identification to those. So, so if you want to continue on, I she was in tears when I walked in the room because she had no idea she was not capable of doing certain things. Yeah, that was when the realization of uh, my limitations that I was facing hit me. Um, prior to that, I was very competitive. You know that, um, mm -hmm. you know, and so I had the mindset that nothing was going to change. I was going to be back to normal. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, that was when the realization hit that my life has forever changed because of this. And I am different now mm -hmm. physically mentally also. Um, so, you know, I, I had a lot of, uh, it, it's very hard. I, I feel I have a new empathy for anybody that's suffered any kind of an accident, life-changing accident. Um, you know, I, I now realize about the PTSD mm -hmm. aspect of it. Um, I was, I was emotionally crushed and depressed over not only my physical limitations, but the fact that um, prior to this, my career had shifted um, the last eight years, I was an elderly <clears throat> advocate in my nursing career. And this was an elderly person that had hit me. And um, he, he at the scene of the accident, I know everybody reacts different. He was very cruel, um, standing over me in the ditch and the things that he said and the reaction that he had. And that to me was devastating that somebody could be that way. I now understand it's, you know, everybody has a different reaction. It was a defense mechanism probably that he was, had shifted into. Plus he had been drinking. So um, I, that was a huge deal to try to overcome was that right there, plus the physical limitations. And life's not fair unless you're hit by um, a trucking company or a millionaire it's not fair. You're not compensated. Like, well, like and people even then, I mean, so, so life isn't fair for anyone. Yeah. So oh. I was dealing with my loss of career and loss of income, um, my physical limitations, mm -hmm. my emotional aspect. So then, uh, and it helped me kind of shift everything to a different perspective. So, yeah. That's so, so because she's my sister, I can get a little bit more blunt with her than I could a normal client. Yes. yes. Uh, so it's like, yeah, it's out of it. yeah. <laughs> she's not a normal client. <laughs> no, because we're, anyway. you know, if you're a twin, you know how that works or if you've got siblings. Uh, so, so. So in all reality, you, so you, and this is with every person that's uh, had sustained any type of uh, life change, is that you've got some choices here to make. Mm -hmm. You can either let this define who you are, or you can take a look at your life and see all the opportunities that lie ahead of you now that your life has shifted. So, 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 so you can't go back to work as a nurse. So, okay, what, what other areas, because... I, you're not just gifted in nursing. There's other areas that God has gifted you with. Let's take a look at those areas and perhaps let's shift our perspective into exploring some more different areas. What does your new normal look like? And then we got to look at the faith aspect of this as well, because when people feel like they've been cheated or damaged or life didn't deal them the hand that they felt they, they deserved, then what are you going to do about it? And you, you can either whine and complain about it, or you can say, you know what? Life's not fair. Life's not fair to anyone that I've ever seen. I don't care no, no. how much you've been given to you. I, yeah. I just, life is just not fair. You can always find that other person that is so much more worse off than you. And, you know, and yeah. so it, it was time for not to, the pity party to be over. It's there's a time to grieve and mourn. Yes. Yes. But there's a time to move on and say, okay, I need to, I yeah. need to get over this. Yes. And so, so still, this has been how many years now? Four years um, coming up four years. And no, I think it's, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. It's I coming up four years yes. in yes. September. It, it happened and 
right as we were opening the studio. Yeah, the yes. day the day the ago. day before we that night that we were we were here working at the studio when I got the phone call from Hank. So um and we were opening the next day. Um which was a Friday night. <laughs> I, yes, just, I, remember I remember that, that too, yes. <laughs> right before sunset. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> My time. Yes. <laughs> So with that being said, you've got choices to make. And with her being my sister, I was like, you can either let this define who you are for the rest of your life, or you can make a new new normal. And I don't like the term because it's being overused, that new normal. Yeah. Right now, it's way overused. But when it comes to traumatic and injury or catastrophic, which means life-changing, by the way, when you've had a life-changing event, then you've got to decide, is this going to define you? Or what does your new life now look like? And I don't want to call it new normal now. I want to say new life because there's a new beginning here. There's always a new beginning, no matter how devastating the issue is. There's always a new beginning in everything. So let's find that new beginning. Let's find those new possibilities that now lie ahead. And then let's move forward. So treating the energetic. So let me tell you, it's been for almost four years now since it's accident. She's still healing. So there is a stage that we all go through when it comes to traumatic injuries. And it's called, I call it licking the wound. So there's a licking the wound stage that has to be done. And we have to go through that stage. And then there's a point of it's time to stop licking the wound. Well, there's right? still points. There are still days that you're like, I can be in my car and I'll be driving down the road and I'll pop over a hill and I'll meet a white vehicle and your heart leaps up into your throat. Yes. There is still those moments where that, that, you know, happens because it was a white vehicle that hit me suddenly just like that. And so, I mean, it still comes back. It still hits you. Every and so it. that right there is a teaching moment every mm -hmm. time that happens. So Ayurveda teaches you to recognize those moments and use those as teaching moments. So as long as she's popping over a hill and seeing a white vehicle and her heart goes to her throat, she knows she's not completely healed. And so there's more work to be done if she's going to live her most optimal life. And Ayurveda and yoga therapy is all about living life as optimally as you possibly can, no matter what your circumstances are. And so that's what this whole program is all about, is that you can sustain a catastrophic injury. Now, let me tell you, she has progressed way far and beyond what any allopathic uh, medicine doctor ever said she would progress. Yes. I totally believe, and I'm going to toot to Ayurveda and yoga therapy's horn here. I totally believe that's uh, as a result of Ayurveda and yoga therapy teaching her to move past the limitations that allopathic medicine, all the doctors said that she would have, right? Correct. I think it was the perseverance. It wasn't stopping right at when I met, I met maximum improvement mm -hmm. in my therapies and my surgeries and everything that the, the doctors could do for me. And I went beyond that. I kept going. Yes. I, I wasn't satisfied with the results that I got. And every doctor that she has went to, she has walked back in and they're like, I can't believe you're the same person. Um, even uh, the um, paramedic that assisted her alongside the road mm -hmm. during her accident saw her, um, what, a couple of years later? He saw her and he couldn't believe she was alive, number I, one. I walked up and talked to him and he didn't recognize me. And I told him that I, I found out what make it rain means. And he said, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I was your patient you picked up in, you know, Shelnaw, Missouri and motorcycle accident. And he got, it was, I love the reaction. He was such a nice guy. He got big tears in his eyes and he said, I thought you didn't survive. And he yeah. said, I cannot believe this. And he hugged me and it was very touching, but yes. Yeah, so. Kudos wow. to the paramedics out there. <laughs> to all the healthcare workers yes, out there, yes, you know, yes. I mean, we yes. said some bad things, mm -hmm. but it's not the healthcare workers as a system. Yes. So I just want to make sure that we yes. are. But going back to the doctors and everything, my specialist that worked on my, just my elbow, because I had a specialist for every part of my body, the one that just worked on my elbow, um, he was one of the ones that said that he had never seen anybody make the improvement that I had made. Wow. And he actually uh, removed some of my hardware that I he said. I say, this hardware yeah. right here uh, that she had in her arm, they said was going to be, I don't know if you can see it, was going to be permanent in her arm. Is all of it gone? 
all but one screw that's embedded. So, but all it's not loose, one screw. But it's not loose. She still has a screw, folks. She still has a screw. <laughs> It's embedded. He couldn't get it out, so it's not loose. That screw's not coming loose. <laughs> All right. So, so with that being said, she was able to get some hardware out of her body that they said she would have to have for the rest of her life. And these were bones that were crushed. And so her bones, she was able to get nourishment into her body. By the way, I use collagen as well. Collagen, bone broth. Calcium. Uh, yes. I mean, magnesium. Magnesium. Yes, magnesium. I used all uh, and then herbal remedies to help mm -hmm. build the bones and then worked on that digestion. And as a result, the doctor said that she would never be able to get that hardware out. He was able to remove that hardware. And so he'd never done that before. Yes. He never done that before. So yay. I, I truly believe in the benefits of Ayurveda and yoga to help people that has sustained traumatic injuries. And I believe it is. And I've said this many times, I've made it my life mission to uh, integrate allopathic and Ayurvedic medicine. I think they make a beautiful integration. If both areas, I know Ayurveda is open to allopathic medicine. If, and more and more as time goes on, allopathic medicine is more open to Ayurvedic methods but as well. I also need to interject here. Um, you know, along with catastrophic injuries, you have lots of pain and I had um, a lot of nerve pain, lots and lots of nerve pain. And I cannot take any of the narcotics or the gabapentin and the neurotin and everything that's for nerve pain. It, it, I don't react to that very well. And so Annette uh, helped me control my pain issues that I have by using, I take turmeric every night. Mm -hmm. um, I take ashwagandha mm -hmm. uh, to balance the system and all kinds of anti-inflammatory foods Mm -hmm. and things to help with the inflammation. So I do not take any narcotics or any um, nerve pain medication. Which is really unheard of mm -hmm. uh, with her type of injuries and our age. Um, 29. <laughs> our, 29, our 29 years. You know, we're almost 30. Yeah, almost 30 years. <laughs> He's so lucky. I uh, got some youngins with him, but no, but yeah, with our age and her type of injuries, um, it is unheard of that she's not developed arthritis <clears throat> and all sorts of complications that come along with catastrophic injuries. Yeah. And so we're, we're really working together to prevent that in the future. Yeah. So. However, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect. I still mm -hmm. have a lot of deficits. I don't mm -hmm. have range of motion in my arm. Like I, like, a normal person does or, you know, on the nerve damage in my hand and use yeah, uh, complete can, use of my hand yeah. and my foot and everything. Um, I'm not living in constant pain. Yes. Now. Yeah. And so I am I'm, functioning. I mean, I am functional and it has taught me how to use my, my arm and my hand and, and change my gait to where if you saw me walking down the road, you wouldn't, you would not realize that there was anything wrong with me because um, the, even right down to the gate because I, my right hip mm -hmm. who did not, which did not have an injury mm -hmm. was hurting all the time. Yeah. So because my left foot was crushed and it was, does, I don't have any movement. And your, in knee. It. your knee was yeah, and my um, knee. dislocated. Yes. And so I was, I had subconsciously changed my gait to try to shift the weight off of it. And so which caused right severe right hip pain. It was, it was weird because mm -hmm. I kept going to the doctors going, my right hip hurts, you know, and they said, well, you didn't hurt your right hip. And I know, but it was my gait. It was your compensation. And so she helped me change my gait yeah. to where I can hmm. look like I'm walking normal, but it relieves I'm walking evenly yes. now. So, yeah. So, so that's an, that's a good point that you mm -hmm. brought up there because when we sustain an injury and we start limping, we're developing a mm -hmm. whole side effect as a result of yeah. the limping because the body compensates and then now we're using and stressing the joints in ways that they shouldn't be yes. used and stress because they are out of balance yes. with that so we in yoga therapy we teach the body to start to begin to uh to try to adjust and and um walk as balanced as possible and we're using balance as a as an example here or walking as an example mm -hmm. and so learning to walk with the deficit as correctly as possible to prevent further injuries to the good sides mm -hmm. down the road. So there's a, yes. it's a multifaceted uh, viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And then also knowing that she is, she is now her left side had been crushed. So forever from this point forward, it's very, very crucial that she works on the connective tissue that surrounds those injuries that's been crushed 
and uh, because they are going to forever, and her scar tissue from all the surgeries, they're forever going to be trying to contract. Yes, and they do. Yes. yes. And the minute she stops doing her yoga therapy, those start contracting. Now, you can do like you do a lot of weights, which is fabulous. So weights and all that. The problem is she also needs to incorporate the flexibility into this. This um, My video feed ended. So... Sorry, I was like looking at. So she needs to inc and continue to incorporate yoga therapy, stretching in this, or her scar tissue, and her injury contraction of the uh, the injured uh, connective tissue. Yes, because I will contract up. I mean, yes, I will start contracting. So it's very important for her to maintain quality mm -hmm. of life. So to wrap this up as as mm -hmm. much as possible is that. Ayurveda, allopathic medicine got her out of the crisis. Ayurveda and yoga therapy helps her to live optimally with her current new life that she now faces. And so now we want a quality of life. So I'm all for we want to live quality of life. And if we're not living quality of life, what's the purpose? So no matter what the situation is, there's always the optimal quality of life that we can attain no matter what we're faced in injury or chronic illness. Yes. Highly recommended Highly yeah. from experience. And Audrey, we both commend you. I commend you for not taking this on as your identity mm -hmm. because we, we live in a culture as sad as it is. And, it's, and I'm not minimizing what people go through, but mm -hmm. people go through a lot of things. What you went through was, was catastrophic. Other people go through very similar things. Mm -hmm. Uh, when people begin to make that their identity, it affects them spirit, soul, and body. Uh, it affects them in their heart of hearts. Yes. They see themselves as less than who they really are. Mm -hmm. So if, if I want to encourage anyone that's that's experienced something like this or something, something similar to uh, what Audrey has, a life-changing experience, when, when you assess yourself, you know that, that maybe you cannot do some things. Maybe you'll never see yourself as a 10 and be the best nine that you can be. Mm -hmm. If you can't be a nine, be the best eight and a half you can be. Use what you have. Continue to challenge yourself. Don't don't settle for accepting an identity that doesn't not belong to you. I'm, I'm so glad that, Audrey, you see yourself still doing the things, beginning to still uh, still experiencing things and still um, beginning to grow into some things that, that maybe you used to do that you haven't done in a long time, but you're, you're there on the, the verge of doing again. So we want to wrap this up. I'm the, not only the pretty one of the bunch, but I guess I'm the timekeeper also because we've been here for over an hour. Oh, I could and, talk about this forever. And she could talk about it forever. I could. Believe me. Um, she could talk forever <laughs> alone about this. But anyway, do you, do you want to wrap things up with anything in particular? Do you want to, um, I don't. I kind of agree with you. I think it's all about the mindset. Um, you know, I am certainly not the most injured person. I have taken care of, of um, you know, people that have been paralyzed and everything. And, and my hat's off to you for that kind of recovery. But despite that, there despite is still that, quality of Despite that, I have life. seen mm -hmm. people. And I think that was probably a lot of my There's inspiration hope. is some of the people that I have taken care of that were uh, devastatingly injured and their outlook on life was amazing. And mm -hmm. so um, there is hope and, yes. and help and do not embrace the victim mentality. Yeah. That's for sure. Perspective is everything. Mm -hmm. So Audrey, thank you for being our guest today. Oh, thanks. Annette, thank you for sharing your expertise in uh, Ayurveda and yoga. And uh, we will just want to wish you all a blessing. Thank you for yes. being with us today. Listen, take care of yourself spiritually. Take care of yourself soulishly, your, your mind, your will, your emotions. Take care of yourself physically. And we will see you next week. Same time, same channel. And then, um, Timmy, just one last question. Timmy has asked um, the process um, to relate to those worried about COVID and becoming um and boosting their immune system. Timmy, we are going to go back to addressing COVID and boosting the immune system next Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in our next show. We're going to talk about our next show's topic is what to do if you when if you do get COVID-19. Uh, so how to boost our immune system, how to heal recover. and recover from COVID-19. So tune in next week. We're going to talk about back about COVID-19. And if you have any questions about today's show, please leave comments. We'd love to talk about Ayurveda and yoga therapy. And if you haven't seen the two previous episodes 
uh, sessions were about COVID-19. So there may be yes. things you want to go back and look at those or listen to those if you haven't had a chance to already. Uh, welcome back and hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.